Hello, this is Carrie Fell. Welcome to my studio. It's been a while since I've done some dying games, so it is time. The magic box. I'm going to draw four papers out of here, and whatever it tells me, that's what I'm going to use to dye some yarn. I had quite a large amount of the four cell four ply wool, and I knew I wanted to make blankets with it, and uh, before I run out of my stash of this, I'm making blankets. I don't have enough of one color to put a 15 yard warp on of, you know, a specific pattern or design. So what I'm doing is I'm grabbing all the dyed warps that I already have of this type of yarn and I'm cleaning off my cones and winding more warps and they're all being thrown on there with no regard to color matching. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be uh, one crazy batch of uh, blankets. So we're dyeing this for sure today. If there's room in the pan, we'll throw some of these other warps in there as well. All right. Wine rose. Chestnut. Number nine. So this, uh, what the numbers refer to are the bottles. I've had up to 10 bottles of leftover dyes uh, lined up here. And uh, right now I have three. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this will be it for number nine. And it is, uh, it looks green, but I believe it is a gold color. We're looking at fall colors that will go well so far. Let's see if this one will. Oh, black. So now it's time to go make a plan, but I will throw my warps into silk while I'm thinking. Okay, I think I have a plan. Of course, all plans are flexible. So this warp has soaked uh, much of the day. This is 15 yards of wool. I really want to see what the gold looks like on white yarn. So this is so this is 58 ends of a merino tensile blend and it's three yards long. So this will be part of a scarf. I do want colors to flow and blend, so I want a fair amount of water in here. Okay, so this is the gold, and this was the number nine, and it looks green in the bottle, but it is called just gold. So let's take a look and see what that looks like. We're adding this to cold water and yarn, no acid. Ah, interesting. It's a very old gold look. And I don't know how much it will change the, the color of this yarn that's darker. So this is the wine rose and I do have the, the stock version of it and I know that it's a very delicate and subtle color. It's not going to be very bright. So I'm going to uh, just take a couple of tablespoons into a measuring cup and add water to this and then we're just going to pour it on the yarn. Where 
looks like on the white. We're going to put more on there. So now we have the gold and the wine rose. So I'm going to let it sit for a bit and see if the water clears at all. And then I'll come back and see if I need to do anything else to it. I have decided that I'm not going to be adding the chestnut or the black at this stage. Both the wine rose and the gold are subtle colors, so we want them to have an impact and the chestnut and the black are going to go on afterwards. Something that I have not tried is mixing uh, the dye powders with uh, acid crystals, the uh, citric acid crystals, and sprinkling it on and I think the chestnut might be a nice color to sprinkle on on this base. So, so little bit of the wine rose left, fair amount of the gold. So I'm going to add the acid. So this is just over a tablespoon of citric acid crystals dissolved in, in water. I'm hoping that that will encourage the, the dye to enter the yarn, even though it's still cold. Okay, that acid seems to have done the trick, and the water is looking much clearer. The sand is still golden. So what I'm going to do is turn on the heat. I think we're going to keep it subtle. I love the the colors that I'm seeing in the in the Merino Tencel blend. And and even the deeper one. They're subtle, but that's okay. We're still adding um, some other colors later. So you're going to turn on the heat, and as soon as it starts um, getting warm, then I think I'm going to want to flip it. And the wine rose seems to be striking faster than the golden, which is interesting because uh, pinks often have trouble with that, but I guess not in this case. This gold is so hard to preserve. I've got a little bit here I think that has stayed gold. <laughs> For the most part, the that wine rose even creeped down all the way down to here. So crazy. The gold is, yeah so difficult to preserve. I didn't have a lot of it to begin with so anyway it looks like the water is clear so what I'm going to do while it's still hot is remove some of the water and I'll save it because it's it is acidic and I'll probably want to add it in again later but but I want to sprinkle uh, some of the acid dye mixture on here and I need it to be low immersion so I'll just let the um, the water cool down just a touch so it's not boiling anyways before it removes some of it. Okay I'm going to put on my respirator now. This is my respirator. Um, 
I'm not going to guarantee that this is the perfect one. Uh, this is what I w found when I went to my hardware store and, and I chose this one from what they had. So whether it's the best one or not, I don't know. So don't necessarily follow what I've done. Um, do your own research on that. But uh, do wear a respirator when working uh, with the dried dye powders. It's not good to inhale them. So I'll be a little muffled now. The reason why I thought it would be kind of cool to use the chestnut to sprinkle over is because I found that the chestnut will uh, create different colors. There's a there's a number of colors that go into the making of chestnut, so um, I'm not sure what we're going to see. Okay, so we've got citric acid and a little pinch of the dye powder in there. And I'm just going to mix it up here in a shallow measuring cup. And I don't know if these rubber gloves will be effective or not. In grabbing a pinch. Because that's the plan, is to grab it and sprinkle it over. So I'm just going to take a pinch. Ah, my rubber gloves are not good for this. Just gonna sprinkle. Oh, some big, some big sprinkles. I can see the citric acid sitting on there, but I can't see if there's any color. Uh, walking on there at all. If you look really carefully, you can see the little crystals in there. But are they giving any color to the yarn? I don't know. Oh, maybe. It's purple, doesn't it? Okay, I think I'm going to flip it and try some more. Let's see what it looks like. If I turn it over. And I'm going to let, uh, let it sit for a moment. And I have a uh, pot set up here with a steamer basket. And I'll put the uh, that one in there. It's going to get a minute to let more of the dye uh, adhere on this one. And then I'll be able to spread this one out more and uh, cover more of it with sprinkles as well. Sprinkles of chestnut dye. I don't know how many sharp dots of color I'm going to get on this. To me, it looks more like smudges of color. I'm trying not to handle it too much here. Okay, I've put it in the pot and I'm going to let it steam for a good amount of time. This Oops, needs some more attention. It looks like there's some blue in here. Isn't that neat? So obviously there's blue in the chestnut. And I love how it's giving some nuances to the different parts. Introducing just a touch of other colors.
Now this is not super washed, so that might be one reason why we're getting more blotches rather than sharp dots. Uh, with super wash it will strike exactly where you put it and this being regular wool it is blending in and moving around a bit. Interesting how the color that's showing up the most with chestnut which is supposed to be a brown is um, the color that is standing up for me is blue. We see a bit of blue here. I'm going to get the camera down here. We see a little bit of blue here. And then sitting at the bottom of the pan, there's a, a dot of blue. And uh, yeah, this is supposed to be brown, the chestnut. That's going on as purple, spots of blue, another bit of blue, uh, some brown, but that's on the on the cotton strings. That doesn't count for anything. That reddish color, I believe, is the wine rose, just where it's settled. Looks like maybe some brown in there, but not dots. brown in there, not dots. And this is quite hot. Um, but there's the, the steamer pot going. So we'll let that steam for, oh, I don't know, 45 minutes or an hour or so. That's been at least 40 minutes or so. And yeah, I see some mottled color in there anyway. So I'll put the uh, lid back on and we'll turn the heat off. And I'm not sure if there's a big change in this one. I can definitely see more of a change on the camera than I can in real life. Isn't that interesting? This all just looks purple. Not seeing any brown on there really at all. But I think we will. Oh, there. See, the camera is helpful. I see some brown there and I see some specks. Look at that. Okay. Purple and blue specks. Look at that. All right. So we are going to maybe see some. And then there's some that's still sitting on the surface of the yarn, I think. Oh, look at that. The camera is seeing what my eye can't see. Yeah. So I'm going to put uh, this in the steamer next. in there. I don't know if that can be seen or not, but we'll look at it again after I've washed it. So, yes, interesting. And that should be uh, that should wash clear, I would hope. Just want to look at the color of the water. There's a faint purple tinge to the water. That's it. And we will add this next. And I will wipe the edges off just to 
get all these bits off. This all fits in here. And I'll turn the heat back on. And we'll steam this for a good amount of time. 45 minutes, an hour, something like that. Now my four tags included the gold, the wine rose, and the chestnut, uh, which I've all used. I also had black in the mix, and honestly, I'm not sure black will improve anything that I've done. I'll keep it in reserve just in case. Uh, the beautiful uh, Tencel and Merino blend um, is not going to get any black on it. I'll decide on whether to add any sort of black um, to the wool later. I There's a good chance I won't. Okay, it's the next morning and we have some fuzzy wool. I just let it cool down overnight in the pot. The water's clear, so that's a good sign. No, no dye leached off of this into the water. Just take it out of the pot and look at it. No staining in the basket that I can see. Hey, this is very different from the other one. It doesn't seem to have accepted uh, sharp speckles, although, I don't know, is that a, there's speckles there, so maybe we do have some, some nice over dyeing. Yeah, I'm here too. It's fascinating how uh, the chestnut dye powders that I used on here uh, created all the primaries so we have a we have red speckles we have blue speckles and sort of an orangey yellow colored speckle and yeah so the chestnut is made up of all those colors which is interesting which is why we see a uh, purple tinge to it with the with the blue and the red. Anyway, I'll analyze that more once this is uh, washed and hung to dry. Okay, here's the finished yarn. Now this is the wool warp that was gray and then over dyed. And this is the small chain of merino and tencel. And right away you can see the shine on this. But, uh, well, let's talk about that first. So, this is 80% merino and 20% tencel. So there's a wonderful shine in this warp. It, as a result, doesn't look as deep or as bright uh, as something that would maybe be 100% merino. And that's mainly just... Um, because of the reflection, well, for one thing, the tencel does not take the dye, and then the reflection of the tencel it bounces back the light, so it um, it has a shine and makes the overall thing look glossy. Now, I couldn't see the awesome speckles, uh, the the speckles that were put on after I originally dyed it. So the original dyes were uh, gold and uh, wine rose. The gold is slightly greenish, which is interesting. 
Uh, there's parts where it's a bright gold and I'm not sure why we see gold in just spots and then um, sort of this greenish color elsewhere. Don't know about that. The wine rose is a pale color. I knew that going in. It's a subtle color. And then I uh, sprinkled the dye powder with citric acid and the dye color was um, chestnut. Obviously chestnut is made up of the three primaries because what we have are colors, all three colors sprinkled in there. So I completely messed up when I did the recap of the yarn and when I was holding up the the fiber up close to the camera I was actually off camera like that. So this is a redo of this portion. So what I wanted to show was the little dots of color that appeared when the dry chestnut dye powder was sprinkled on. So we can see little bits of blue and sort of an orangey color and uh, some reddish colors. So you can see it's almost sort of the three primaries here all sprinkled on top. little dot of blue, little dot of red, little areas of yellow. So yeah, we can see all the different colors, the three primaries that make up the chestnut dye. There's another nice area of lots of color. So it adds a little subtle bit of color to uh, to a yarn that otherwise would just be uh, pink and sort of a golden green. There's a little hint of blue. Yeah, so this uh, yarn has some great luminescence and it'll make a, uh, a gorgeous scarf, I think. Now the same thing happened to the to the wool and it actually um, seems to have taken the the uh, spots of color a little, a little more sharply than than this one uh, this is 100% wool and of course it was the gray to begin with so it's going to be duller overall again where the gold uh, died up it's very greenish although there are parts where we're getting what I would consider gold, but again, this is um, a gold that leans towards green. So very interesting how that went. And this, this struck quickly, this gold. Um, and now, and then we have these, the sprinkles, which, ah, again, add some really cool interest. We have blue, we have the red, and we have this rusty color. So I'm going to do some more experiments with uh, the chestnut. I'm going to mix it with uh, citric acid like I did here and sprinkle it on some white yarn because I'm dying to see the variety of the color of the, uh, the sprinkles on there, on the speckling. Because it looks like there's gonna be a great variety uh, of speckle colors. I mean, just look at them all here. Wonderful, wonderful subtle little color spots. So this warp is going on the loom right now. It's part of the big uh, 2021 stash busting project that's taking forever as I uh, I grab the, the wool um, as I need it and dye it and then put it on the loom and then I go, hmm, I still need some more. And I wind off some more warp and dye it and thread it onto the loom. So this is going to be an interesting addition to that uh, blanket project. So I'm gonna go and uh, thread this uh, onto my loom right now. I'm going to have another video that shows the making of these blankets and uh, all the different warps that I used and added and uh, that'll be coming out later because it's going to be a while till 
uh, the project is done. A big thank you to my patrons who support me as I continue to create these videos and experiment with new techniques. As always, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and thank you for watching.